everybody's in the same boat and there's just been a sense of community that I don't think we've ever had in the club volleyball world that's really surfaced over the last couple of weeks with people that you wouldn't think want to help each other are really diving in and doing that. This is Kathy DeBoer, ABCA Executive Director. This educational tip of the week is focused on the business decisions facing volleyball clubs during the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent shutdown of our junior volleyball season. I'm sharing an interview with Steve Sack, co-owner of Michigan Elite Volleyball Academy, in which he discusses the provisions in the recently passed Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, or CARES Act. He also advises club directors where they can go for resources and help. I had an engineering degree out of Michigan State, spent some time in in computer consulting. Um, I've coached my kids in soccer and basketball and baseball, but played a lot of volleyball and really developed the passion for the sport. Um, And as the opportunity to step into Michigan Elite jumped in, it was a sport I already loved. And we were able to come in more so to run the business side uh, of the organization and really you know, partner with our coaching staff um, and the administrative staff to let them focus more on what's going on on the court and really focus on the kids. Uh, we have six locations uh, where we lease two of our buildings and then rent space uh, from four other locations. Uh, we have about 145 teams. The first issue Steve addresses involves dealing with staff. We're in a position that none of us expected to be in, you know, even a month or two ago. And there's an endless number of decisions club directors are are making right now. Everybody's club staff, basically from the coaching along with the administrative side, is the lifeblood of our organization. So there are some things that we obviously have to look at. How can we be supportive of our staff, primarily and initially, on the non-volleyball side of things, from a human being to human being perspective? Then look at how can we, how can the staff help us support our players? Trying to keep some normalcy in the kids' lives and opening up the conversation with them about volleyball and non-volleyball related things, as well as try to open up some training opportunities. Lastly, is the financial side, and, and I think every club director, if they were given the choice, would love to carry their staff through all of this financially. But there are some hard decisions that have to be made in terms of what they're capable of doing, both short term and long term. And we're trying to stay focused initially on the short term because it's changing every day. The recent legislation enacted over the last couple of days and even over the last week is going to significantly factor into that financial decision because it is going to be able to offer, based on my understanding, some significant relief in regards to things like payroll and rent and utilities and some of the basic costs associated with with keeping a club vibrant and alive. The, the relief that's there is actually on several different levels, and I'm not a SBA expert or a banker or an accountant or a tax advisor, but from the information I've been able to glean from this is that there are going to be several new and expanded aspects to unemployment, which can obviously compensate individuals. If a club does go down the path of saying, hey, we have to do a short-term layoff or a furlough, it's going to allow for a longer application window. The, there's going to be an extended coverage period. Typically, I think it's 13 and it's gone to 26 weeks. And for the first time that I'm aware of, it will be extending coverage to independent contractors, which many club clubs use in, within their coaching staff. It just came out yesterday with the whole payroll and paycheck protection program. It's really incentivizing small businesses to maintain staff. But the basics, again, that I've been able to pull out is that ultimately they're going to try to take the average monthly payroll that you've had for the last year, and then they multiply that by 2.5. Let's say you have $10,000 in payroll. They would give you, in essence, $25,000 as an immediate loan to pay payroll, rent, utilities, insurance, things like that. There will then be a period of time that passes where over, I think, the next eight weeks, you gather that information in terms of what your expenditures are, and then you go back to the bank that's facilitating the SBA loan, and they'll analyze that for forgiveness. And if you can show, I've spent this money on payroll, rent, utilities, those types of things, they will then look at that and say, okay, here's the amount that we will actually forgive from that loan. So if you got $25,000 and you can show them that all $25,000 was spent on those items, they basically then forgive the loan and it's almost in a sense free money. If there's any difference where you don't get uh, forgiven the entire amount, that smaller amount then goes into a 10-year uh, note uh, at up to 4%. 
So it's really giving uh, small businesses the incentive to maintain their staff as much as they can. For the most part, it's going to be fairly loose, a fairly quick application process, and some of the standard application items you have to go through aren't going to be relevant here in terms of personal financial statements, a proof that you can't get credit elsewhere. So they, the, the government is really stepping up in terms of trying to incentivize small businesses to maintain their staff. Steve also has advice for dealing with facility costs. Where we rent space, obviously we're not incurring a renting space moving forward, and we pay on a month-by-month -month basis in our situation. So we're able to work with our local facilities that we're renting from in terms of, hey, if we're not incurring that, that time, we won't be incurring that cost. And most of them have been you know, completely understanding of that. We do want to partner with them to make sure they're viable long-term, so we're maintaining those relationships and having those discussions. Um, in, the, in the situation where someone owns or leases a building, you've got to go out basically and talk to your landlord um, and also look at other areas of vendors and, and other community partners to try and do what you can to extend your payment terms, whether it be a landlord or a vendor. First and foremost, ask. If you don't ask, there's no relief that you can get. As far as a mortgage goes, there are some things that, depending on how your mortgage is structured, that immediately there's been indication that banks are going to give you anywhere from 90 to 100 days deferral of your loan. In essence, they'll take that period of time and put it at the end of the loan. So you might get a three-month deferral on, on payments there. Um, and the SBA specifically has already stated that they're going to give a six-month deferral uh, with no principal or interest payments and put that on the back end. So again, that's, that can be a pretty significant relief from the economic uh, distress uh, on the payment side. Because in a lot of cases, there's absolutely nothing we can do with these buildings. But at the same time, I do encourage people, and we're trying to look at it and say, is there possibly anything we can do? We've actually had conversations with the American Red Cross, given the shortage of blood, um, that they are desperate for facilities because the lockdown on schools has limited somewhat the blood drives that they've been able to have. So we're getting some site visits this week where they are going to stop by, look at it, and see if over the next two to three weeks we can facilitate some sort of blood drive in both of our facilities that are local here to Detroit. Finally, Steve gives suggestions for gaining information. From a financial perspective, talk to everyone that you know and trust in terms of your banker because they're going to be the people that help you kind of administer or, or apply for these small business loans. If you've got a good accountant, they can be a, a wealth of information in terms of the very simplications you have to look at, also from a tax perspective. And the SBA does have local regional offices, typically multiple ones in each state where you can reach out, and the, the local representatives are very helpful in terms of once they have the information, they're, they're trying to help people get access to this money. Secondly, one of the things that I've been overly impressed with throughout this whole ordeal is how together the volleyball and even the youth sports industry in general has come together. So if there's relationships you have with other club directors, if you have both locally and regionally or, or nationally, reach out to them. I mean, the webinars I've been on, there's been small group discussions. Everybody's in the same boat, and there's just been a sense of community that I don't think we've ever had in the club volleyball world that's really surfaced over the last couple of weeks with people that you wouldn't think want to help each other are really diving in and doing that. We're all trying to save the solve problem. There's a lot of unique ways to do it. Um, and then lastly, like I mentioned, the, the webinars that are out there, there's a lot of them going on within the club world and within the youth sports world, but there's also some really informative business-focused or small business loan-focused webinars that are just a wealth of information because, you know, as a, as a volleyball club owner, a lot of these things we've never had to deal with before or they're a completely new paradigm that we're dealing with, within and there are a lot of people that have a lot of great information. So I, I, I do recommend, and we've done this, is to reach out and talk to as many people as you can because there's just a wealth of information out there that you can tap into. Steve closes with some words of encouragement. We're all kind of riding this wave together. Everyone's going to have certain circumstances in their life, so we want to try to be as supportive as possible across the board. And, and having patience as well because we are all dealing with an ever-changing, almost day-by-day, hour-by-hour, minute-by-minute landscape that's changing under our feet as we go. And for me, it's been heartwarming to see that the camaraderie that's happened within the club volleyball world.